<laughs> Welcome to the Inside Out Show. My name is Sandra Reza. Thank you for joining us. On today's episode, we're going to be discussing a very, very controversial topic. Trust me, it is very controversial. But just before that, let's just make some noise for my wonderful audience. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Of course, to Charles. Charlie, Charlie, how are you? I'm fantastic. You look so colorful. Because right? Because Charles, I know, is always wearing black. Yeah, the Lord touched me to this. I thought I should do something different. But the colors are lovely. Thank you. Colors. Thank you. Coming from you, I feel honored. Thank you. I beg you. <laughs> okay, so today on the show, we are discussing the 10% syndrome. Or a lot of people would rather call it tithing. Anybody interested in the topic? Now, a couple of weeks back, this debate started, it was all over the place online, started by a popular on-air personality in Nigeria who spoke about tithing and says that a Christian is not supposed to pay tithe. Now, this is coming in a community where we have a high percentage of Christians. So, obviously, everybody started talking, both on social media, every, actually more on social media. And this discussion on 10% syndrome starts right after the break. Don't forget, this is the Inside Out Show. I'm Sandra. See you on the other side. Okay, I believe in tithes because first, it's God's command that you must pay your tithes. And the Bible have ordained it to be. And then we must follow according to what God said. As a Christian, I believe in tithes and I believe in paying my tithes. It's good to be paying a tithe. Either you're a Christian or Muslim. I feel, I feel very indifferent about tithing because I feel that different things happen for different people. Some people do not pay their tithes and things are working for them. It's in the Bible. The Bible said one tenth of your income. Based on what our cleric told us in the mosque and all that, in the sermon and all that, it's good to be paying a tithe. What I don't believe in paying my tithes in a particular church. You can pay your tithes anywhere. As a matter of fact, the tithe is not actually meant for the church. It's meant for the less privileged and the widows in the church. The more you have your business expand, the better it is for you to pay your tithe. Because it's something that will promote the name of God. The more you do it, the better it becomes. So when you pay your tithe, definitely you are enlarging and promoting the name of God through that tithe you are paying. If you pay your tithe, pay your tithe and see if God will not open um, the windows of, of heaven to supply. And so when you pay your tithe, you are more or less paying away your debts and you can never run into debt. Yeah, I can put it as given back to the society what you have, you need to give to those that don't have up to you, as in as much as you have. You can like give as little as you can afford to people. It's not, it's not like it's a, a by force kind of thing, like anybody is putting a gun to your head to pay your tithe. So I feel like, I'm, I feel very indifferent about it. And also, some people, when they stop paying their tithe, things start going bad for them. I think it's based on your mentality and your mindset and your faith also. When you give, you are not giving to them, you are giving to yourself. Because when you give, you receive. It's in the Bible, it's stately clear that when you give, you receive. Out of giving, out of abundance of what you give, you receive more. Because when the hand is closed, how does it come in? It's when your hand is open that you come in. Paying your tithe, it is very good. Okay. All right. Welcome back to the show. This is the Inside Out Show. I'm Sandra Eze. Thank you for joining us. Uh, before we went on a break, I introduced the topic, which is the 10% syndrome. And I gave you the background to this topic, which is the current conversation going on of Nigeria's uh, social media space about tithing. Should you pay tithe? Should you not pay tithe? Where is it quoted in the Bible? Like, Bible scriptures have just been flying back and forth all over the internet, Twitter, Instagram, and we're like, ooh, Nigerians really do read the Bible. But the twist today is that we're not just looking at it from a Christian perspective. We're also looking at it from an Islamic, from a Muslim. We also want to know, does tithing exist in the uh, Islamic religion? And if it does, please um, tell us more. I'm already acting like I'm asking the question. <laughs> okay, right now I'm going to just introduce my panelists, starting with Godwin Ogeniremu, who is a Christian, and you pay your tithe, right? Thank 
you for being on the show. And up next, I have Jibril Folami, an Islamic cleric. Thank you. Thank you for being on the show. Finally, I have Abiodun Hassan, who is an atheist. I have an atheist point of view. Wow, I am surprised because the thing is, atheists, right? We know we have a lot of atheists in Nigeria, but it's rare to find someone who comes up and, you know, gives things as it is and, you know, speaks up about being an atheist. So thank you for being here. It really means a lot to us. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Right. Okay, so let's get to <clears throat> the business. Let me start with you, Godwin. You're a Christian. You pay tithe. What do you understand by tithe? What is tithe to you? <clears throat> okay. Yeah, to me, uh, tithe, tithing is an important part uh, of my life. As a Christian, it is a commandment that has been given in the Holy Bible. And uh, it, is, it is personal so for you to believe it or not to believe it. But as for me personally, I believe the commandment, which I, by believing the commandment, I obey it and I pay my tithes regularly. But what is tithe? What do you understand by tithe? Tithe is uh, giving 10% of your income, your earning. Yearly earning, weekly earning, we monthly, monthly earning. Monthly earning, depending on what you are doing. If you are a civil servant, it is assumed that it's a monthly earning. Mm -hmm. Assuming you are a businessman, it can be daily, you accumulate it, you pay it weekly on Sundays, okay. uh, or any day of your choice. Mm -hmm. And uh, and every title, according to the word God said in Malachi 3, reading from 10 to 12, it is believed that there are a lot of blessings attached to the tithe payer. And... He, God himself promised a tight payer that he himself will rebuke the devourer for your sake. It's like a father is fighting for his little baby. Hmm. And you know what that means. So when God fights for you, nothing else matters. He always wins the battle. So by the, when you pay your tithe, all the blessings that are attached to the, the tithing principles... He released them unto you. He said that he will open the doors and the windows of heaven to pour down his blessings on you. And God's blessings are numerous. When God blesses a man, no man can cause it. Even the enemy of the man who became the friend of the man, they have no choice than to rejoice with the man, to celebrate his greatness. Okay. Adiodun. Let me get your take on that. You obviously you're an atheist. You don't believe in tithing. So what what, what do you have to? How do you respond to that? Does that mean you're not blessed because you don't pay your tithe? Not that I don't believe in tithe, mm. but my stand is this: Why taking it to church or mosque? Why take it to church Ch or, or mosque? mosque? Tithe is like a, a, a tax mm. giving out. People. Well, what I say is this, people go to church to pay tithe and this tithe is compulsory. Whereas, whereas your neighbor needs that help. Mm. You know what, sorry, hold your thought. Let me get to it. Now that you mentioned, I feel I need to uh, uh, hear from you, Jibril, to first of all understand, do you pay tithe in the Islamic religion? Well, thank you so much. Um, in Islam, we don't pay tithe from your own definition of tithe. Okay. In Islam, we have what we call zakat, which is closer to what you call tithe. Mm. Zakat simply means it's a kind of tax, borrowing the word he used, levied on some people that Allah has blessed, God has blessed. Now, what do we mean by this? It's a 2.5% of what you have made in a year. Now, the 2.5% you are paying on is not your salary, your your weekly income. It has to do with something you have worked over for a year. Let me give an instance. We, call, we have what we call nisab in Islam. Nisab means a threshold. Mm -hmm. Before you can pay zakat, you must have made 1,308,000 naira before you can pay zakat on it. Now, what do we mean? It's not, it's not your regular salary. It's a surplus on what you have made for a whole year. Mm -hmm. Are you getting it now? Or like the tithes, where you pay 10% of your income. No, this is not like that. So it's for some certain level of people that God has blessed, that has got it to that treasure. Okay. And you don't take it to a man. Maybe I need to educate my very good friend there. 
So you, who do you, you don't take it to Imam? Who do you take? You it don't to? take it to the Imam. We have in Islam in an Islamic state, you have those who are designed to collect tax, to collect the zakat, and it's not meant for everybody. Mm -hmm. The Imam that is blessed does not has no business with zakat. What you need to do is when you collect the zakat, when you tackle, uh, the, the collectors collect the zakat, they give it to eight set of people. Eight, eight set, set of, of people. Can you list them for us? Please? According to the Quran. Okay. The first is the poor. Mm -hmm. The poor, according to, you can say this in Quran 9 verse 60. Number two is the needy. Three, you use it to pay debts. Number four, for travelers that are stuck. Number five, you can use it for the cost of Islam. I'll remember the three later. But we have eight category of people who can... Okay, the tax collector is also entitled to it. The tax collector? Yes, the zakat collector. For instance, now, the zakat collector is not rich enough. As I go to the level of paying zakat, it's also entitled to it. You can give out of it. You can collect out of it. But he has okay. procedures. Coming up next on the show. Before you can be a Zakat collector or an administrator, mm -hmm. it's a five-year course in a university. It's a course? Yes. By the time they accumulate all these tithes, Zakat, or whatever you give to them, mm -hmm. you realize that they are more wealthier than you. Hmm. When you say the pastors are getting rich, have you taken your time to look or to research, to look another source of income of that particular pastor? All right, fantastic. So, um, let me get to you, Abiyodun. So, now you can have your views. Now that we've heard from the Christian angle and from the Muslim angle, Muslims don't pay tithe, they pay zakat. Yes. Christians pay tithe, which is 10%, and they give it to the church. So, what, uh, let me hear your view as an atheist. My stance to remain this. Mm. If you have to go, if you look at the Christian way, the 10%, my concern is this. Why taking it to, to church? To the church. Why? Why taking it to mosque or the alphas? Some people will still tell you that we have been paying my zakat to alphas. Some people do that. Why? When we are, because as I believe every number, every, every, number, every normal human being mm -hmm. has to work. You must work before you live, before you survive. Yeah, but some people are more privileged than the others and more successful than the others. No matter what, do the, do the, do the, do the, do the little you can for you to survive. Nobody is only 100% okay here. We only do the little we can do for us to survive. Hmm. So even if you, if you are okay and you, pay, you believe someone around you needs, and help, needs help, you give, not taking it to pastor or church. Because if you look at it, by the time they accumulate all these tithes, zakat, or whatever you give to them, you realize that they are more wealthier than you. Hmm. Is that the issue here? The fact yes. that they end up. Look. They the, little, the, little, the little 20 naira. The little 20 naira or 30. Okay, let, let's, let's put a beggar for an example. Mm -hmm. The little 20, 20 naira you give them, accumulate to millions, take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. Yes, talk less of giving thousands to one person. It's the argument here, uh, Godwin, maybe you help me out here. The argument is not giving to a person. Um, in Christianity, um, we're, made, we're made to believe that you are giving to the church, or has that changed? Are you giving to the church or to the pastor? Uh, in tithe, when you, when you give your tithe, you are not giving it to the pastor, you are giving it to the church. If you, the first tithe that is recorded in the Bible can, is, was Abraham. Abraham gave his tithe in the Bible. Jacob also gave his tithe in his Bible, in the Bible also. Apart from that, the Israelites also gave their tithe. And they gave this tithe to the church, not the individual. And if you look to the apostles of old, we, you will realize that the tithers of them, it can be crops, it can be anything. They bring these crops to you, to the church. And at the end of the day, when you go to the church, if you are hungry, there are abundance of food. Those of you that attended Catholic of old, you can testify to it. Back then, the Catholic of old, when you visit the Reverend Father, you go to their houses. If you are hungry, the first thing they do to you is the things that the, 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 the plants, the crops that they use to pay the tithe, 
They will bring you, they will cook for you, they will treat you very fine, and you will eat perfectly. I mean, testimony to that. Tithes these days, it can be money. It can be what you get. And, and also... Okay, go on. And, and also, all the scriptures that were written that bring your tithe, bring your tithe, it is written that all the tithes were taken to the house of God, not to the servant of God. All right, Jibril. I see you twisting your face there a little bit, which tells me that there are a couple of things he said which you do not completely agree with. Yeah. Do not ever compare zakat with tithing or with tithes. Okay. Zakat is an institution on its own. Before you can be a zakat collector or an administrator, Mm. It's a five-year course in a university. It's a course? Yes. Wow, okay. Okay. So, okay. you Let's don't... I want, it's not like you take your money to just one imam and say, this is my zakat for the whole year. No way. Oh. There are some people trained to do that. And their job is very simple. They administer what they gather from those wealthy people according to the scripture and to the guidelines in Islam, and they give it to those who are in need, just like I've mentioned. Yeah. Among those people that are in need, that you can give the card to, is those people that are slaves to free them. Mm -hmm. So for us in Islam, the card is taking wealth from the rich and giving it back to the poor to make them better off in the society. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now that you mentioned that, um, popular opinion out there is that um, in the northern part of Nigeria, which is predominantly um, Muslims. Muslims, yes, you have a lot more poor people there. Beautiful. Yeah, so, in a, and then you have, it's like, in the northern part, this is according to, you know, people who've lived there and statistics online. So you have the poor who are, like, really poor and the rich who are extremely rich. Yep. There is barely any balance in between. So if all this zakat that is being collected is being um, given to the poor, to charity and all that, why do you still have extreme levels of poverty in the north? Beautiful. This, this thing we need to realize I don't believe in shying away from the realities. Mm -hmm. So many people say, I am a Muslim. I am a Christian. Do they actually follow the guidelines in the Quran and in the Bible? Somebody tells you, I'm a Muslim. I am wealthy. I am rich. But that person has gotten beyond the level of Nisab, as in the threshold, mm -hmm. to pay zakat annually. But that person has failed to pay the zakat for years, and zakat is the fourth commandment, the fourth pillar of Islam. So if you don't pay zakat, is there anything like maybe a curse that falls on you? You know, part of the things you need to realize about zakat is this. When you pay your zakat, you're fulfilling God's commandment, mm -hmm. Allah's instruction. When you fail to do that, you are asking for his punishments. Mm. Do you think that at, at any point, do you think there is, a little extortion going on in between because the challenge a lot of people have about this tithing is the fact that I am earning let's say 10,000 naira a month and 10% is 1,000 naira so imagine a church of let's assume that everybody in the church earns 10,000 naira and you have about um, a thousand members in the church that's a lot of money I'm terrible with math you guys do the math <laughs> you know so eventually the church um, People believe this goes to the pastor. So eventually, when that happens every month, the pastor is obviously earning a lot more th than the people. So that's why you see this is the popular argument out there. So you see the, 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 the pastor driving all sorts of vehicles, and the others are still jumping bikes and jumping buses. So do you think there's any element of extortion in this tithing? First of all, who are the others? I'm a tighter. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed. All the blessings God prescribed that is attached to a tighter. I'm partaking from it. Are you tithing because, because you genuinely believe in it or because you just want the blessing? The thing is that, that I, genu I genuinely believe in it. The thing is that before you can tithe, mm -hmm. you, first of all, you have to look who is God to you. If, if you can preview who God is to you, 
And are you really obeying his commandment? When you obey God's commandment to the core, you will, you will pay your tithe. Let me give you an example. There are God's commandments which says don't steal. People are still stealing today. And there are people who obey this commandment, don't steal. They don't steal. Then the aspect of you telling me that pastors are uh, being re getting richer and people are getting poorer, I'm a tighter. And if you want to compare me and my pastor, I believe that we finances, we are okay. Then apart from that, when you say the pastors are getting rich, have you taken your time to look or to research, to look another source of income of that particular pastor? There are a lot of pastors today who do a lot of extra work. They write books, they go to conferences, they have good friends that they give them money. You don't give your friends money. You mm. give your friends money. There are pastors, they are human beings like you. you. People give them money. And do you think you giving one naira? Do you think a man can be surviving without one naira? Then apart from that, collective one naira. It's a collective one naira. <laughs> yes. And have you taken your time to know how the administrative of the church is being run? How people are building churches? How they buy diesel? And how they run the activities of the church? Sometimes you might be thinking that uh, we go, we pay, our, we go, we we give our offering. The last time I was in one of the churches for one of the Bible study, mm. I realized that all the money that was given in offering was less than 500. Offering. 500 and, naira. Yeah, 500 naira. Wow. And the diesel we used that day, the program was two hours. Assuming a diesel is selling for 180 or 200 naira per liter, and a, generate, a diesel generator that is consuming 10 liter per hour. Hmm? Mm. Per hour. If you times it, then you realize that the 500 naira is not enough to even anchor that particular pro, uh, program. Where do they get the money from? Do they steal it? It is from part of the tithe that they will remove from to add to it. Building of churches, traveling, going to preach the gospel, printing of handbills, sharing of uh, tracts. Okay. All those things, you can name them. That's it where is, the tithing goes. It is what they use most tithe for. Then if you tell me that pastors are being rich, this and that and that, and you are being poor, and you are a tighter, that means you are not faithful in your tithing. Coming up next on the show. Tithe, precisely, it is precisely used for the welfare of the church. They give their member a, quota, a, a percentage for their school fees? No! And it's all this, their cover cover they collect from them. They used to build those institutions. You said you are blessed. By who? God. <laughs> By God, yes. You don't Why believe not? in that God. Okay, welcome back. This is still the Inside Out Show. I'm Sandra Eze. And yes, we're still discussing the topic 10% syndrome. Actually, it's just a way of, to make it fancy. The real topic is tithing, and we're looking at it from different angles, from an atheist view, from an Islamic view, or from a Christian perspective. Now, Abiyodun, do you think giving to religious institutions, no matter which one it is, do you think it's some form of extortion? To me, it is. It is? Yes. Why? Ask Adeboe, how did he acquire money for his debt? Let's ask that question. But it's possible he has some other business ventures. What business? I mean, I'm not him, but I'm just saying. How do they acquire money for the university they built that? Remember, their church can, can't even afford the money. Let's ask ourselves these questions. If not the, if not the tight payers' money they use, and yet, that's why they, they pay that tight, they can't afford the school fees. Hmm. Let's, come to, let, let's come to government. Even government do consider the so-called citizen or indigenous of that particular state. Let's say, okay, let's assume you want an admission in a, in, a, in a redeemer. Do they give their member a particular percentage, a particular quota? Okay, you being a member, you place also amount, which does not exist. Likewise, the Fountain University, owned by NASFAT, they give their member a quota, a, a percentage for their school fees? No. And it's all this, their cover, cover, they collect from them. They used to build those institutions. To the best of my knowledge, for you to acquire a debt, the moment you start thinking of it, you start spending. And there's not, when it comes to debt, there's nothing free. The moment you start thinking of it, 
you buy, you 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 you, you, you place it as in you pack it. Let me use this, you pack it. It's like, there's nothing free concerning jet. Let's uh, let's calculate those cobalt covers as in the billions they used to maintain that jet alone, and let's see how many members go to help in that churches. Hmm. And I keep on saying it. The, the problem we have in this part of the world is religion. Let's, let, let's tell ourselves the truth. Could you uh, emphasize on that, please? How is it religion? Now, if you look at what they are saying now, they are contradicting themselves. They are contradicting themselves? Yes. They are. That's your opinion. Could you tell us how? <laughs> He's saying 10%. He's saying 2.5. No, what, is, no, what are they saying? Hold on. What, what is it? Go on, go on. We're listening. And the, the, he said he believes in paying to church or mosque. Uh, he said he, 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 he prefers paying his own to, to, church, to, church. to church. Yes. Likewise, he says there's an institution. Mm -hmm. You need to pay to your zakat too. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yes. Well, if he believes in that, fine. And he says something that is blessed because he paid tight. Who is not blessed here? <laughs> no, he said he's blessed because he paid tight. Isn't it? Mm. Who is not blessed here? It depends on understanding of, of blessing. My dear sister, we cannot be at the same level at the same time. Whether I'm rich or not, I'm blessed. Hmm. Whether you are rich or not, you are blessed. For the fact that you can leave your house and come down here, you are blessed. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Godwin, <laughs> you know what's funny? <laughs> My God. What is funny? I don't even know what's funny, but I'm laughing with you. No, Why are you laughing? No, no, no. Someone no, asked no, one of no, the no. better questions there. Okay. You said you are blessed. By who? <laughs> God. <laughs> By God, yes. You don't My believe God. in that God. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 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 Hold on. I'm not saying I don't believe in God. Hold on. Mm, mm, mm. No, no, Hold no, no. on, let's I'm not saying I don't believe in God. Don't misquote me. Okay, no, no. Don't misquote me. Hold on, one house. You are an atheist. An atheist doesn't believe in existence Not of God. Not that I believe in God. Don't misquote me. Okay. Not that I don't believe in God. But there are some certain things I don't believe in. It comes to religion. Like? Fine. Some people believe if they don't go to their pastor, God will not answer their prayer. Why? Must he go to church or, or to meet our pastor? He says some believe. I don't know his pastor. So hold on. Allow some. him. I you will allow him to laugh. Believe you need to go to church or to a pastor before God answers your prayer. Okay. And some people believe you need to meet more an imam or a father before God answers your prayer. Why? And I believe my God is everywhere. I can sit here and talk to my God. God answers my prayer. Must I go to church or go to mosque? Hmm. Okay. Now, um, Godwin, let me get to you. He made a point earlier. I'm not getting, sorry for cutting you short. Okay. Oh, you've not landed. If, if you ask people, they'll tell you. If you, some, if you ask some people, if you ask them, what do you think about this? They'll say, my pastor said, why can't they read their Bible of their Korean and reason? They say, my pastor said, some people don't have to think, except what their pastor or their, or their imam tells them. Mm. That's my own. Okay, so you believe that people no, are I don't just believe too in God. gullible. The reason, not let one pastor or one imam direct you. Reason as a normal human being. God give you this brain for you to think and reason. Okay, so basically take your brains to the church and to the mosque. Yes. Okay, <laughs> all right. I get the point. So now he talks a bit about, um, he believes that when you give to any religious institution that it is a form of uh, extortion or thereabout. And then he talks about the poor in, in the churches and all that and all the examples he gave. So now the question to you, Godwin, now is, is tithing to a certain percentage used in community development? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the thing is that, like I said before, every man is entitled to his own opinion. Mm. And one of the greatest problems of Nigerians and world, the world entirely is ignorance. It's a big disease. And if you can hear my brother here saying both of us are contradicting ourselves, and he called himself an atheist who believed that God exists, but does not believe in the principles of paying ties. Let me tell you something. What you don't know is always bigger than you. And for you to be powerful, to, 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 to know whatever thing you are doing in the society, mm -hmm. is to research. And one thing I've realized among Nigerians, especially the youth, they always conclude before research. Their research. Paying my tithe, if I don't pay tithe, I might be blessed. 
But God is, is kind of challenging you. Pay your tithe and see if I will not open the windows and the doors of heaven to pour down. <laughs> okay. When, when a man challenges, when, when a man challenges you for a battle, it is left for you to go and prepare to know who he is. But now it is your creator that is challenging you. And what are the blessings of God? They are so numerous. Like I said, it's not money. People tag riches as money. Money is one of it. One of it, yes. And believe it or not, the faithful titles, they are self-sufficient. Mm. Then when you talk about if they, they are using the money for community development programs and things like that, if one, somebody, a particular person is not doing something, doesn't mean that others are not doing it. I've seen pastors who... And then they did the road in their community. They did the road to, and I've seen senators, governors, who does not have road, motorable road to that community. It is vice versa. But tithes, precisely, it is precisely used for the welfare of the church. If you go to the church, they have welfare departments. They have a lot of departments. And my sister, don't confuse tithes and giving. It is not the same. But let me side. ask you a question. Would you rather, would you rather, let's say if there is a call in the church for donation or for tithe or something, and then there is somebody else by the side who, maybe as you're entering, perhaps there's a beautiful gate, <laughs> and there's a beggar there who needs money, mm -hmm. and maybe you have your tithe, which is maybe 60,000 naira or there, whichever the amount is, and then the, the beggar is by the side, and the beggar just needs 10,000 naira. Would you take... 10,000 naira out of that 60,000 naira to give the beggar, knowing that it would cut shut your tithe. So your tithe is no longer 10%, it's perhaps an 8% or thereabout, or 8.5 or thereabout. Would you? To me, there are, let me approach that issue in, in two dimensions. Okay. If you willingly remove 10,000 naira to give to that beggar, mm. if you go inside the church, you are not expected to pay that 50,000 era as a tithe. Tithe does not mean that you must pay it at that day you have the money. You can, okay, because I've given this beggar uh, the 10,000 era. Okay, let me postpone my tithe till the next, till next week Sunday. That next week Sunday, you can rally around it and add up the 10,000 to pay your tithe. But like I said, tithe is different thing entirely from giving. By giving that person, is not you are tithing to that person. You are giving that person willingly. <laughs>
that he can't pay that card. But God sees what you have. And you will give account. So it's between you and your God to decide that. But the card, where you pay the card, it is meant for the community. It is meant for the poor. It is meant for the needy. It's for you to put smiles on other people's faces. Apart from serving the commandment of God, you are also protecting yourself indirectly. If I've gotten to that level, then I must pay it. And you must. I, it's compulsory. It's compulsory. Okay. It's compulsory. You must pay. So if you fail to pay it, then you meet your creator and he'll give account. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Having heard from their views, the different views, has it changed your mindset about tithing in At any all. way? At all. Ah. Okay, Some, people like you. Some people say I'm stingy. At all. Some people say I'm stingy. Look, one, no, 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 I'm stingy. One thing I do is this. Whatever I do that has my conscience, I'm okay with it. Uh-huh. Whatever I do that makes me happy, I'm okay with it. Mm. You can't live your life for me. I can't live, your, I can't live my life for you. Sure. Everybody has his own way of life. That's true. That's my own way of life. That's sure. Whatever I don't pay tight or zakat does not mean I don't help. So, for you, you pay your tithe and offerings, but you just give it to charity. That's where yours goes. Whatever my, my mind gives that needs, I do. When, when, once I have it, I do. Mm. But what I'm saying is this. Some people go extra mile in paying tithe. I can't think of any myself because I want to satisfy you. If I'm not okay with it, I won't do it and regret or lament. Can, can you give us an, an example of going the extra mile to, okay. pay, to pay your tithe? Let's say... I have a thousand naira mm. with me left, and my family is not okay at home. Are you getting it? My family is not okay at home, and you need the help of 500 naira, my dear brother. I have to consider my family first before you. Sure. Okay. Because if my family is not happy and I give you, definitely, I won't be happy within me. I'll, because one way or the other, I will complain my conscience, my mind will be, will be disturbing me. So why can't I just do what I would want to be my, my free? Hmm. If I give you today and I give you tomorrow, if you complain, that's your own problem. <laughs> yes, that's your own problem. Okay. The most important thing in life is this. I keep on saying it. Whatever you do that makes you feel happy is within you. And if you do bad, no, we don't need anybody to tell you. Mm. Your conscience tells you. Okay. All right, ciao. Let me hear from you, Charles. I'll take off my glasses for this one. Um, <laughs> so, growing up, this, I, I want to ask you, sir. Growing up, yes, my mom would always tell us, you have to pay your tithes. It's very important. And as little as we were, of course, we're not earning salaries or anything. But we're giving pocket money and stuff. And if you were giving pocket money of 1,000, you have to pay 100 naira. So we're doing that, you know, as little kids. But now I earn a salary. And of course, I know it's important to pay my tithe, yes. But we keep hearing, um, she would always tell us at the time, if you don't pay your tithe, you would um, encounter financial issues. So my first question is, are there actually financial issues? That's one. Two, we've been hearing of the term curses. What are these curses? Because nobody seems to talk about and tell us what the curses are exactly. So what are they? And does Titan, you've been talking about blessings as well. Does Titan actually guarantee blessings from God? Actually, does it? Like I said, Titan is part of its own. There are different laws of prosperity. Principles of prosperity, I call them laws of prosperity. And laws of prosperity, can, it has to do with giving. You can give to the poor, you can give to your mother, to your father, to a lot of people. They pray for you. Blessings will keep coming. When you, they pray for you, God answers prayers for you. But when you give, when you give your tithes, if your mother can pray for you, Pray for you to somebody, and the person answer the prayer. Now you are believing that you are giving your tithe to this person that, that, that created the whole world. And assuming your mother is praying for you, and God is praying for you, who will you prefer to pray for you? It's so, God. Hmm. And the blessings, God is telling you that when he, you pay your tithe, you give, you do this, you do that. Specifically tithe. He did not say that when you give, I will bless you and I will open the windows of heaven. The scriptures 
is for feed on its own. He said, you can't, give, it will come back to you, good measure, yeah, pressed down, good, shaking together, uh, yes, running that, over that yeah, excess. Yes, shaking, and that is what he said. But in terms of that, he said, when you give, it will open the windows and the doors of heaven. So he doesn't open the windows when you don't tie. It, it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. Depend, yeah. you might, you, depending on your own understanding of windows and doors of heaven, it, it doesn't end there. And he said that he will rebuke the Devour. devourer for your sake. Okay, let's analyze it this way. When you give good measure, praise and shaking together, uh, both in your bosom, people will still bless you the same way you, you have been blessing people. When you bless people, people bless you back in return with whatever thing you sow, likely whatever thing you sow. Then, apart from that, assuming God is telling that he will bless you, that is one, and he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Whatever money you give out, the, uh, the return might not be uh, uh, equivalent to your healing for a particular sickness. But when God says that he will rebuke the devourer for your sake, believe it, he will fulfill it. Hmm. All right, thank you very much. On that note, we will take a break. This is the Inside Out Show. When we come back, it will be time for audience comments. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Coming up next on the show. I know God's word that is going to make me rich. It's going to add prosperity to me. So why would I be poor as a Christian? But when we don't pay tight, the destruction and doom that will become your way will be disastrous. What do you guys use to build your mocks? That's why God said in the verse of the Quran, man jahadala asanati fala umachulam falia. It is God that said that if you do it, the God that reward people in the secret will reward you in the open. Welcome back. This is still the Inside Out Show, and we're still discussing the topic 10% uh, syndrome, mostly known as the tide. It's been a very, very interesting discussion. My panelists, I definitely have to tell you, you each hold your ground pretty well, and you're like, you're enlightening us. So thank you so much for that. However, right now, it is time to take this to my audience and get their comments and their questions. Uh, so, Charles, I am starting with you. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> I'd like to ask again, Sarah. Um, so let, let me paint a scenario, yes? So I, uh, I do 419, for example, or any other vice you can think of to make mm -hmm. money. And the blessing attached to tithing is the windows of, the, of heaven will be opened and the Lord will rebuke the devourer for my sake. So I pay my tithe on all of these things I do. Does that blessing still apply? <laughs> You, uh, before, before you, you ask the question, I believe that you've already know. You know the God we are serving is a holy God. A holy God always accepts holy things. You cannot deceive God. He's your omnipotent, present, and science God. He sees all. He knows the, the source of income. So if God is holy, <laughs> if, if God is holy, definitely, that thing you are using to pay the tithe, you yourself, you know, you, you stole it and it's not right and that is not holy. How, you that is concluded that it's not holy, how do you expect God that knows and sees all to accept that which is not holy? It's not accepted by God. My question goes to Mr. Godwin. Okay. Um, two, three years ago, I was working and I was paying my tithe. So a program in my church we had a program in my church, and they talked about tight. I went to a priest and I asked him if I should pay tight. And he said, if I pay my tight today, and the next day I still have to go and beg somebody for food, I'm not supposed to pay tight. If I am still under my parents, I am not supposed to pay tight. If I, have, if I don't have shelter over my head, I'm not supposed to pay tight. If I am not contented, I am not supposed to pay tight. So I want to know which category of persons are supposed to pay their tight. And the second question. <laughs> you said when giving, we shouldn't let the, right, the left hand know that the right hand is giving. For the celebrities, or most of some people that go to charity homes, they give out some stuffs. Pictures are taken. And for the celebrities, because of the paparazzi, they don't have 
the pictures are uploaded and posted on social media. Does it mean that what they are doing is wrong? Or what? Okay. Can you answer that? Uh, let me take it from the first before I come to the last, which is the most interesting point. It is, it is not bad for you to give and do sorts of paparazzi, snappy pictures, telling the world that you are giving. It's not a bad thing. Everybody, everybody has his own lifestyle. It's not bad. But, but what the, the reason for that statement is they spend the money. We don't know what they are using it for. I say that there are people who are giving massively, pastors, they give out, but they won't let you know that such amount has been given out unless you are closer to them. That is their own lifestyle. The one that is doing paparazzi, that is his own lifestyle. It's not a bad thing. It's not me that said it. It's not a pastor that said it. It is God that said it. That if you do it, the God that reward people uh, in the secret will reward you in the open. Openly. Then the, the second question. Like I said, there are, there's what they call doctrinal teaching. Every religion has its own doctrine and its own belief. And believe it or not, not all pastors, all uh, religious leaders, not all are holy. Not all will make heaven. You and I know that. <laughs> From the perspective of somebody telling you that uh, when you, are, you don't have a shelter, don't give, to me, from my perspective, the person is restricting you for uh, tapping into the blessings God has in store for you. It is bad for him to advise you that uh, if you don't have a shelter, don't give. By so doing, you are shortchanging yourself from the, the laws of prosperity whereby you give and it shall be given unto you. My brother, like I said, if you give to your fellow neighbor, it is you definitely, there is a return. Assuming you are giving, <laughs> definitely there is a return. Assuming you are giving to God. Like I said, he prays to God for God to bless you. Now you are giving to God, which is direct. There is no middle man here. It's, it's direct. So I believe that God will always bless you more than somebody's prayer. The person might say, God bless you, that's all. But God himself is telling you that when you give this thing, that he will pour down his blessing upon you. And somebody is telling you that, don't give. To me, it's restricting you for you to attain your greatness. Okay. All right. Let's have a comment. Um, the Bible says in um, Malachi 3, verse 10, that we should bring all the tithes into the storehouse that they will meet in my house. I still believe that people use their sense knowledge to quote the scripture because they don't quote it the way it's supposed to be. They use their own form and knowledge. If the Bible says bring the tithe to your storehouse, people have the impression that the tithe is being given to the imam. God bless you. Or the pastor. The pastor. No. People, people are always deviating from the scriptures because when you say bring this tithe to your storehouse, like the Bible is saying, bring the tithe to the church for the equipping of the, the work of God, for the expansion of it. Of the kingdom of Once God. Once the kingdom of God is expanded, the glory uh, returns to God. And once that happens, you are blessed. But once you don't pay tight, the destruction and doom that will, will come your way will be disastrous. <laughs> uh, okay. Going to Mr. Jibri, I'm sorry. Yeah, Your sack card. You say you give it to... I don't know. Then, what do you guys use to build your mocks? If you don't, we, we use our tights for something valuable. For something we know that is going to attract people to us. And for something we know that it can Ooh. bring people closer to God. Ooh. Yes, to our God, I meant. Then, what do you guys then use to build your, your mocks? Beautiful. Yes, yes. And again, and again. Sorry, sorry. Does that, does that mean that... Does that mean that that you guys then pay another thing that you used to build your mocks? Or is the same sakat that you guys share, distribute around to build mocks everywhere? So. What do we use in building all the, the mocks that we share around? It's called sodakor. Sodakor means charity. Now, I told you at the beginning of the show that you have to get to a particular threshold before you can pay zakat. Zakat is the fourth pillar of Islam. 
and made for those who have the resources to pay. So for an individual who wants to build a mosque, you can decide to build your mosque on your own. You can decide to look at the congregation to say, let's contribute and build a mosque within our environment. 10 naira, 20 naira from these and that, you come together, build your Raise mosque. Raise funds. That's why God said in the verse of the Quran, man jahadala asanati, follow umachul nam thalia. When you do, what you so a good for Allah, it will return it 10 times of what you have done. Okay. All right. Another question. Okay. I just want to say that tight can give one open doors here on earth, but can never determine heaven. Let's have that in mind. Titan can give you room for prosperity and success, but can never guarantee your salvation if your life is not in line with God holiness God. and righteousness. God bless you. And uh, from the other angle, you also look at it, that's the angle my sister came from. If you study the scripture and the theology of Titan, the truth remains that it will not, it's not too far from what our Muslim brother is trying Same. to explain. Yeah. This, this, the, the, the principle of tithing. If you are not working, the law does not hold you yes. from paying tithe. If you are working, then you have the responsibility. Whether you pay weekly or daily or yearly, or the most important thing is that you are taking 10% out of what you have. I have an opinion and I have a question. Okay. So I believe as a Christian, if you don't pay your tithe, you are robbing God. That's the unbelief. Yes. And the Bible says God honors his word than his name. Mm. Yes. So if you, the Bible says when you pay tithe, your blessing is sure. Believe it or not, your blessing is sure. <laughs> but one thing you need to know is that when you don't have faith, you forget the blessing. You said something about, um, <laughs> said something about um, how Adiboy has a private jet, how all these pastors are getting their money. To me, I believe that once I read my Bible, I know God's word. That is going to make me rich. It's going to add prosperity to me. So why would I be poor as a Christian? It's your faith. That's your belief. Belief. So the pastors, they believe in God's word. They pay their tithes. And they believe that God is going to add on to them. That's why they get the money to buy their privilege. Because you can't be a Christian and you say you are, you are portraying Jesus, you are, you are a representative of Christ, and you are poor and you are begging. No, it is not possible. That's why that so they, those people are rich. God adds on to them. Bread. And those private jets, they don't just use it for nothing. To me, I think they use it to transport pastors all over the world Whoa. to preach the gospel. Hmm? <laughs> like to, to add to her, like I said, what you don't really know is always bigger than you. Uh -huh. If you are not closer to some of these things, you will not know what they use it for. How can a man buy a private jet without no reason? It has a reason. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it is, these things you are saying is kind of an easy way to propagate the gospel, to reach out to different countries. They go to different countries, they fund these jets and things like that. And I know people in this Lagos, in the, mm -hmm. in, within the, that, they give as if there is no tomorrow, and they are so wealthy. Mm. They so they give to the gospel, to the ministry, in oh order my. for them to go on, and they are so wealthy. Fantastic. <laughs> the, you seem to be under a lot of fire today. So, um, <laughs> just before we wrap up, I would like to get your final comment. Mine is this. Believe in what you do and make yourself happy no matter what. Mm. That's my own. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> Moving on to you, Jibril, uh, final words. For me, my parting shot is this. I will appeal to people that whatever you're going to do, ask yourself, is this in line with what my God created me for? Hmm. If you are a Muslim, a thoroughbred Muslim, must believe in all the principles of Islam as stipulated in the Quran and the Son of Muhammad. For zakat and sadaqah, it's all about taking care of ourselves and believing. Okay. 
Coming to you, Godwin, final comment on tithing. I will urge all Christians to take tithing as the 11th commandment, like I said. You have the 10 commandments. There are a lot of commandments in the Bible. Take the, the, the tithing issue as the 11th commandment because uh, the Bible said that since uh, I was born, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, neither Second. beg for bread. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, if you are holy, you, you pay your tithes regularly and it's genuine. Believe it or not, God honor his words more than his name. Every blessing uh, written in the, in the scripture, all of them, you will be a partaker of it. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, my panelists. Till the next episode of the Inside Out Show. Thank you so much for watching once again. And a big shout out to uh, Beauty by Omalicha, DJ Rabiu, for last place, and Evel Cell Nigerian Limited for the support on this show. And of course, don't forget to go on to our Facebook site. That's uh, the Inside Out Show. Also on Twitter and Instagram. And please follow us and post your comments. We got a couple of comments uh, um, on this topic i'm not quite sure why we weren't able to read it but please tell us your stories your comments even after the show feel free to post your comments and on the next episode of in the inside out show we just might read it thank you so much for watching the show once again i can't say it enough <laughs> see you next time bye <laughs>